You're watching Democratically Speaking. Mark Lindy, your host. I'm chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, and today I have uh, Chris McMillan, who is a former city councilor and now a candidate for mayor. Chris, welcome to Democratic. Uh, thank Speaking. you, Mark. Thank you for having me here today. Y you're welcome. Glad, glad to see you. Um, you're the first mayoral candidate um, okay. interviewing. Um, I hope I'm that way in November 3rd also. There you go. Well, <laughs> you get to pick the ballot order coming up right, soon. Right. But um, why mayor? I know you ran before. I know you ran right. uh, last time when Mayor Balzotti was the mayor. You were in the preliminary election. Right. You were not successful, so you right. sacrificed, gave up your city yeah, council yeah, yeah, seat. But yeah. now you're back. How come? Uh, I just I was I was waiting and looking and uh, seeing who was going to be coming into the candidacy uh, for mayor and. After July hit, and July 31st is the last day you can pull papers to run for any office in the city of Brockton. Uh, I, I, you know, come July 14th, I looked around. I just saw two people in there that I thought would not help out the city. So, with my eight years' experience on the city council and one year in as a president of the city council, I said that the city desperately needs someone who has the experience, who's been working with the city, knows all the intricates of the of the departments and the budget to get in there and be fiscally responsible. Uh, I guess I don't see that happening right now. That's why I'm in the race. Okay, now I'm looking at your sign sitting yep. right here. You got three words on it. Yep. Vision, leadership, and action. Yep. Okay. Um, you're describing yourself with that. Give us your description. Tell us why those words are so important to you. Well, I, I just don't see a plan for the city of Brockton. I don't see any vision that they bring in uh, stable employment. Uh, when I was a council in Ward 7, I brought in, I had a bunch of empty buildings. I brought in, and I worked with the Westgate Mall. Um, they changed up their facade, they changed up their lighting, they changed their security because they asked myself as the council that ward, what are the people looking for when uh, they bought the pro they brought the par bought the property. Um, so I also worked with and that with them that brought in the market basket, which created over 400 jobs for the city of Brockton. Um, along with that, they. Uh, I, I worked with the Northeast Electric, and they brought their main headquarters on Oak Street at the Old Garland Mill Building. And then uh, I worked with Crown Linens for three years to try to get them to develop a, a site on the old Howard Johnson's, which is a 20-acre site. It had a contaminated soil. The company spent a million dollars to to uh, 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 freshen it up, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then they moved their headquarters, main headquarters, the Crown Linens uniforms and linens into Brockton, and created over 100 plus jobs along with another 100 plus with uh, Northeast Electric. So, I mean, that's my, my vision was to bring in the businesses that are great, great for the city, good, good fit well with the city, create jobs, uh, bring in the income, bring in the revenue for the city of Brockton. Commercial properties bring in more revenue than, than regular uh, residential. So you need to have commercial properties in there, but you don't need to scare them away with all these uh, tax overrides that they're looking for right now, increase in the water rates that they're looking for right now. So uh, that's, that's basically what the vision part of it. Leadership is uh, I'm a proven leader of Ward 7, eight years as city councilor, and the councilors uh, elected me, uh, 10 councilors elected me as their, pre their president in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, that's saying that you know, basically when the mayor leaves the city, goes out, outside the state, I then become basically the mayor. So mm -hmm. um, I, can't, I can't change contracts and all that, but I am the, I, if he leaves the city or they leave the city, I am the person. The council president is the mayor, basically. So an action plan. I mean, we need an action plan. What are we going to do with the desal plan? Plants. You know, I don't think purchasing the desal plant is the is the uh, the right way to go. Uh, it's a, it's an I, it's a it's a bad product to begin with. Nobody wants to tap into it. It's ex almost double the money on the regular water. My my solution is to have the state of Massachusetts come in and purchase that plant. Not bring us that would knock us out of the contract with Aquaria, and then we can sign a contract with the state. That we can uh, pay as we uh, pay as we use, and that would d that would release the 6.3 or almost 6.4 million every year that we're wasting on this desal plant. I don't see 88 million dollars for this plant is a feasible mm -hmm. amount. Two years ago, was, I heard 60 million dollars, and even the CFO told me it was way too much. Only half of that sh it should have been. So, where the 88 million dollars ca came from, I have no no idea. But so on the on that plant specifically. Yep. Um, uh, in terms of the state purchasing it, that would be similar to what the MWRA Absolutely does, right. where people purchase the water that they use. And we could have gone that way. I mean, you have to pay a fee to get into it, but 
the fee will be a lot less than the six million dollars or the forty four plus million dollars that we owe on the contract. We owe seven years left on the contract. Uh, when you purchase the, the eighty eight million dollars without if you even zeroed out the the uh, any type of interest on that if you if you bonded it, I mean we're only good for like basically a hundred million dollars left on the bonding. He want, they want to, uh, the mayor wants to pull the eighty eight million dollars and bond that plant. It's like it's using up all of our resources in case you know we need it for emergencies, and um, that will come out to around you know almost three million a year for the next thirty years. Mm -hmm. So why would you you know want to do through the thirty years pay for the product for thirty years? I know it's ours and we can try to sell the water, but no one's we already tried that. You know, no one has tapped into it. You didn't see Easton, Mansfield. You haven't seen anyone. There's only one group that wants to tap into it from what it's I understand. It's the power plant. Which leads us to the next thing. Okay? Right. That's been a proverbial question. Yep. You were eight years on the council. Yep. What's your position? Has anything changed? What do you see no, with the power plant? I don't see. I, I'm, I've been against the power plant from day one. Um, I spoke to my residents uh, in Ward 7 when I was the counselor. Uh, I had multiple meetings w with the residents I represented, and then I went. I've been to the meetings uh, for the power plant and looked at their plans. And I don't see that the uh, money that they promise is going to uh, be true. And the water that they want to tap into now is the wastewater. I believe it's only 100,000 a year income if they do that. But um, I don't see. They, they keep on changing the little plans here and there. And I don't just I just don't see it because last year for if you want to talk about power plants gas fired power plants a lot of the power gas fired power plants because of the cold weather they can't the pipeline is so small they can't draw all the gas so they convert it over to diesel you know you know so clean you know not clean diesel but it's it's regular it's diesel so this plant is set originally had diesel coming in now they say they're not going to have the diesel but what are they going to do in the cold weather shut down the plant they're they're trying to make money down there if they ever did come in. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be pumping into diesel, which truckload after truckload after truckload will be coming down the streets, tanker trucks of diesel. I mean, low phosphorus diesel is is still diesel, mm -hmm. and that's what the, that's what I saw. That was the red flag last year alone. With most of the well, not all the gas-fired power plants had to convert over back to over to diesel as an emergency fuel. Mm -hmm. So I'm de definitely against it. Don't think the money's there at all. Now, Chris, it's it's, yep. it's two years later. You've been off the council. Yep. Are the issues the same? Are they different? What issues do you see that are key? Um, you, you know, you you come from the legislative branch, right. the council branch. Yes. You want to be in the executive branch. Right. How do you see it right now? I, I see that we're not. Uh, the crime hasn't gone down at all, and when this mayor has had promised to bring in. 50 new police officers, which is not 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 happening. And, and unfortunately, I was telling everyone the truth that we didn't have the money for the 50 new police officers, and it's the truth. And um, you know, the crime is still up. It's getting. I think it's getting worse. Uh, they have to change their tactics. And I'm going to sit down with the department. And I'm going to sit all the brass down together. Going to bring in outside people to to evaluate where we should change, what we should change, and how the tactics will be better. You just don't drive around aimlessly right now with, you know, it's, all, it's basically what I call a smoke show. Um, you drive, the, like the motorcycle police, uh, they drive around, and they're told to just to drive through the neighborhoods. They don't take calls, and a lot of it's uh, paid by comp time, which when they do, do take that time, it's time and a half to fill their position. It's not their fault. I don't blame the police officers one bit. It's the head of the city that's telling them what to do, which is the mayor. And that's a waste of money, and I'm going to bring back in fiscal responsibility. And that's, that's what we have, we're lacking right now. If you read the Standard & Poor's about the bond ratings in jeopardy of dropping back down, that's, the, that's bad right now. It's very bad for the city. And I'm hoping that we can, the city residents, which make a, a big change in November 3rd, and elect myself, someone to come in here with the experience, Hit the road running and and bring out and bring out my plan. Now um, the form of government we have, Plan B. Yep, Plan B. Uh, is the way it's defined on paper yep. is strong council, weak mayor. Right. You sat on the council side. Yep. Okay, for eight years. Yep. You'd be sitting on the mayor side if you were successful. All right. How do you see the relationship with the mayor and the city council, uh, cooperative working relationship? We've seen cooperative, we've seen adversarial, we've seen everything in Brockton. 
Uh, the relationship started off and still is, I think, is toxic between the mayor and, and the city council. Uh, his first, one of his, the mayor's first actions is to sue the council because he didn't like what was going on as far as the water, uh, the um, water commission and all that. So you don't do that. I get, a, I get along well with the, with the uh, council. I, as a former councilor, I respect their position. They were elected by their residents and their wards and their at-larges were elected by the residents of the city. So they are going to help out their areas. I'm, go I'm there as an executive, as the mayor, is to work with them, find out what we need to do to make this better, a better place to live, period. I have no agenda. Right now, you know, the difference between myself and the mayor is that he has an agenda, is that he's trying to fight to keep his job. I'm fighting for the residents of Brockton so we don't get back into receivership as we did in the 90s with the state taking over control, laying everyone off. So that's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the residents. I was born and raised here. It's a great city, very diverse, and I, I just want to help them out. Now, at this point in time, where we're just shy of the week where if someone filed their paperwork, they could get out if they didn't want to. There's four candidates for mayor. Yes. There's the current mayor, Bill Carpenter, yep. yourself, yep. Jacob Tagger, and Chris Hopkins. Okay, new person on the block, never been involved in city politics before. That gets whittled down to two right. for the November election. And the November election's going to be a little confusing this year because there's going to be two ballots. Yes. There's a city ballot right. and there's a state ballot because there's a vacancy caused yes. by the death of Tom Kennedy. Yes. How do you, last time around, there were three candidates. Right. You were the third. Okay. Right. This time around, I'm sure you look at it differently. How do you convince the voters, okay, I've been gone for two years. All right. You need to put me back in and change direction. How do you convince? Well, two year, I took a two. Year, I, I gave up my seat. I didn't lose my seat as a right. counselor. Right. Right. Uh, the last two years, I've been catching up with the family, rejuvenating my batteries, basically. And now I'm, I'm when watching the city council, I'm not happy with uh, the way the city is going right now. The amount of money is being spent. Uh, the crimes up. Uh, some some plans in place uh, that. I think would be detrimental to the residents, especially in Ward 3 with the, with the casino. Uh, I'm not in favor of the casino either. Um, I, and that's, that's where people you know, are saying to me, well, if you want to bring in jobs and money, then how can you be against the power plant casino? Well, it's, it's like the market basket, you know, Crown Linens. You bring in a business that's right fit for the city, it creates jobs. It cre brings in income, revenue. We can find other things and other, other businesses to come into the city of Brockton. I'd love to see, you know, a lot of these large businesses, like these large banks to come in uh, and make their headquarters here in Brockton or something like that. Um, when, we, when I was a counselor, everything that everyone sees right now happening, was done as when approved when I was a city council over two and a half years ago. The downtown area, the, the, the enterprise block, was approved when I was a city councilor. The, light, the new, new lighting in downtown and all the curbing was approved when I was a city councilor. The downtown city hall was approved when I was a city councilor. West, uh, West, I mean, uh, Pleasant Street was, done, was approved by the state. And they were just waiting. West Elm Street was approved by the state years ago. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen in Vincente's excuse me, supermarket. Yeah. They were it was already almost a done deal as long was along with the colleges coming into the downtown. That was just about a done deal for both of my new Vincente's was looking at the property back two and a half years ago. I was I was talking with the council Monahan from Ward Two, which is that's his ward. He said it's a go. It's a go. They're very interested in it, and they just got to get the banking in line. Well, unfortunately, the, they they got the, fun, the funding and after I, I left. But I have not seen anything brought in by this mayor. Any businesses brought in by this mayor? He claims he's bringing in all this stuff, but he has not. It was all pre-done while before he even became mayor. So he can't say that he brought anything in that I can see. Now, are you concerned that a um the proposed downtown college campus mm -hmm. and the, the Massasoit Life Science Human Services Building is not being built. Are you concerned right. about that? Very, what would be your plan and how would you attack it to convince the governor who doesn't want to o go over the bond cap to actually deliver to Brockton? Right. That's, that's, that's the thing. We've got to work with the state le delegation. I have to get in there and, and that's another thing. I'll be up to the state house or my people will be up to the State House pounding those doors down and telling them that we need help in Brockton. 
We need to uh, redo the formula for the schools so we can get more money, so we can uh, rehire those teachers. The classrooms are, are extremely large, uh, you know, 30 to 35 people, uh, kids, and, 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 and the teachers are, are at the wit's end, actually. They need all the help they can get. And I'm going to be that person, that mayor that goes in there and fights for the residents, fights for the teachers, fights to have the new, to fight the government, basically, to have the state to get the city some money and, you know, bring back the, 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 the community school, the, the Massasoit, bring back the, the, you know, the college campus, and, and we'll work it out. We can work it out. We'll go to the federal level if we need to. Mm -hmm. And same thing with the desal plan. We'll go to the federal level if we need to. We can't keep spending the money the way we're doing right now. And the residents and the business owners can't foot the bill anymore. We have to find alternatives and, and, and grants to do something. Now, another important role for the mayor is chairman of the school committee, yep. chairperson of the school committee. If I remember right, I've been around here long enough, if I remember right, you were a PAC president at one point. Oh, okay? a long time, yeah. So I was telling you off camera before, a, 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 a former mayor, and I'll leave that person nameless, went to the school committee meeting <laughs> for the first time and said, you really have to be here for two and a half hours. Right. Their meetings are pretty intense. They have a lot of subcommittee meetings. Oh, yeah. I know the vice chair does a lot of extra work as the vice chair to make those meetings right. when the mayor's not there. Right. How would Chris McMillan, who's used to city council meetings and their brevity, city council meetings are brief. Finance committee meetings these days are pretty long. How, what would Chris McMillan do with the schools? You mentioned about the class size and the right. funding and everything like that. What's your vision for the schools? My vision for the schools is to uh, actually bring back, well, I guess they're, bring, they're coming back now, the middle school sports, the act, extracurricular activities for the kids. Have uh, you know a lot along? I like to see them extended though, as far as the, so when the parents are working in town, they come back around six six thirty. They st the kids are still doing extracurricular activities. That's the funding I like to see. But I'm used to the meetings. Uh, I know what I'm getting myself into. I evaluated everything. Spoke it, spoke with my family about this. That's why when I'm when I made my decision to run for mayor this time, I I, I talked it over with my my whole family. You know what's going to happen. This is if I do get elected. These are, this is going to be my my agenda, and this is going to be my schedule. And they're okay with it, and I'm okay with it. I know what I'm getting myself into, and that's what the difference between right now with the mayor, who's only been he was a school committee for two terms, and then he's a, as a, a mayor for two, for one term right now. So he only has six years experience, and actually two years in the city government. I had eight years in city government. I know what's going on. I've been with the school. I've been at the school committee meetings. I've seen how they run. So I'm not. I'm very familiar with the this, the you know, the intricate part of the city works and how it works. And with working with the superintendent of schools and find out what their vision is, trying to find the money for uh, Kathy Smith right now to bring in the money, bring back the teachers, bring back the after school uh, sports and activities, arts, and expand on that. And I'd love to see that expanded. But right now we have to take it one step at a time. So I'm, I'm committed 100% to the city. So that's why I'm, I'm sacrificing, if you want to say that. Mm -hmm. My family, um, you know, because I, I won't be probably home too much, but it's, 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 it's okay. It's, it's, it's worth it. Taxes, mm -hmm. okay. Seen two different strategies over two different years. One year, city did not go up to the full 2.5% levy. This year, they did. Right. Okay. Um, do you think that helped or, or hurt in terms of the bond rating oh. or the budget or anything like that? Again, yeah. the council gets the budget from the mayor. The right. mayor's the CEO. They, he does the budget. The council can only cut the budget. Absolutely. They can't move things around. Right. Uh, talk about your first budget that w you would do if you get elected. Well, I'm just basically, we're going to see where we are as far as bringing in more money far as, you know, with, with grants and and with the state and hopefully, hopefully fighting. But you only have six months when, when you're elected to the mayor, uh, to, the, to budget, basically five months. You, you inherit need. a budget from I'm gonna the mayor. Inherit, I'm going to inherit, I understand if, I, if I'm successful, it's going to be a very, very tough budget for me my first year. Um, I'm going to inherit uh, a, a huge deficit the way it's going right now. And it's unfortunate, but I'm willing to attack it and go at it. and and speak with the people and, and let them know. I, I think there's other alternatives to raising the taxes. We have to bring in the revenues and we have to make secure, secure all the delinquencies and the taxes and such. But we, we don't, we're not attacking that. And 
some of these special interest groups that have got their hands in there right now, they're getting fed extra money. Uh, I don't agree with a downtown manager. It's $75,000 that could be spent to hire a police officer. I mean, the downtown manager, I have not seen anything happen right now. And I've been told by one of the uh, at-large councils that you got to let two years is not enough. Well, that's, that's the common th factor with the city politics. Two years is not enough. So wink, wink, vote me back in, and I'll help you out. And then two years after that goes by, and they're saying, keep reelect me. I'm still working on things, and I'm right in the middle. Please reelect me. And that's a, that's a bunch, uh, you know, it's a smoke screen, what I call. Mm -hmm. um, if they don't show, if I'm elected mayor, and I don't show any, any, any you know, decrease in crime or uh, income coming into Brockton and you know, re reducing the deficit, then, then I just, just kick me out. I mean, that's, that's it. Give me the two years. You gave this mayor two years. He hasn't performed. He's gone the opposite way. And don't let, please don't let anyone, you know, don't let him fool you this time. Um, he fooled a lot of people, hiring 50 new police officers when, I, when, when he's elected, not paying for the D cell, um, you know, just, uh, just, you know, transparency and truth. Basically, that, you know, that's, that's nothing that that's happened. He's hired a lot of people that were in his committee. And I personally, I would have put, a, I would put a hiring freeze right now on the city and, and, and then just focus on the public safety to hire them instead first. You have to have it in tiers. If you have enough, public safety is number one. You need the police officers. If we have extra money, hire the public safety first. If we have any more extra money, then yeah, if you need someone in the IT, bill, IT or business department or the water department, yes, we'll, we'll have room for that. But just don't go crazy. And what, they, what I call crazy right now is hiring three people that he knew quite well and they are part of his committee to the build, uh, Board of Health. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. It just keeps on going. And if you allow another two years, it's just going to be worse. So. If you have an opportunity to debate him, are oh, you going to bring that up? That's going to be soon. Okay. Yep. So we're, we're working with all the candidates to try to get that to happen so we can educate the voter. All right. Um, let me ask you, um, in, in terms of priorities, you're talking priorities, public safety being a priority, um, full disclosure, I'm chairman of the library board, you know yep. that. Yep. Where would a library fall? Okay, in term, because the way I look at it, that and I'll just be, give you my opinion okay. first, is <laughs> and because I'm hosting the show, normally I wouldn't get to do that, but I look at the library as public safety and education. We keep people, we keep kids off out of trouble. We keep them off the streets. Right. When schools close, they go to the library to do their homework. So how does that fit in when I, you're sitting here de determining priorities? I, I agree with you 100%. The library should be tied with the public education. They, they, those two are right even, as far as I'm concerned, because they're the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get you have the, kid, the kids, and, and they need resources to go and and, and go, you know, and, and go into use the computers, printers, read books, and to look up. The libraries are right there, right next to the public. They should be intertwined. They should be part of the same, the, basically the same group. So they're right there on the top. Public safety, I would say, the education, which would include, include the libraries, and then you know, and then everything will fall underneath that. But senior, not too citizen, senior citizens, okay. No. You got that council on aging. Yes. You were very involved. You were, I think, president of the Friends of the Council on Aging yep. at one point, yep. and you looked like you enjoyed yourself at the senior picnic. So no. where do they fit? They're they've given their life over the course of time. They're good residents. A lot of them are on fixed incomes now, worried about the taxes, things like yep. that. Where do they fit in? They fit in uh, right right after the libraries, I would say, because I mean they are the lowest funded. Uh, department in the city of Brockton, $103,000, that's all they get. And th th when I was down there, do and I uh, volunteered for bingo down there for years on Friday mornings, they, they were, uh, back when the former director was there, they, they were scrambling. If they had something wrong with their air conditioning, they were, they were desperate. They, they, mm -hmm. The building department is telling them, there's nothing really we can do, we need more money. And, and yeah, I would love to, I, I would, personally would expand their, their budget. Okay. So. Um, what do we have? Is it five minutes? Okay, we have five minutes. I okay. want to make sure you have enough time to talk. This is the first one. Hopefully, we'll right. do another one. Right. Hopefully, we'll have debates. I'm going to do candidate statements. You name it. Um, tell the voters. You're having a great conversation with me. Yeah. Look into the camera. Tell the voters 
why Chris McMillan, why now, how to get in touch with you, how to be involved, and in, in, in what you're going to be doing over the next uh, few weeks leading up to preliminary election day. Okay. Well, I, I hope I don't come, about, I come around and look like I'm angry. I'm just uh, very passionate about the city. So some people say I look angry sometimes, but I'm not. Um, I have the experience, ladies and gentlemen, uh, eight years, as I said, on city council, one year as a council president. I do have the experience. This city needs, desperately needs someone to come in and be fiscally responsible for your money and show truth and transparency. And, and, ba and basically, that's, uh, I'm, I'm a basic guy. I mean, that's all. I mean, I want to come in, help out the residents of the city of Brockton. The Council on Aging is one thing. The library is, an, is another. They're, they're, they're desperate for help. The, the, the crime rate is up. They're not, it's not working. And I would take, take it, the police department, and go into it and reevaluate it, reevaluate every department, matter of fact, and make sure we're getting our, our, our dollars due. And that's basically what I am, what I am. If you can reach, uh, if you go to my website, it's chrismacmillan.com. Uh, it'll show you my action plan, show you my, my experience with the, with the schools, Council on Aging, City Council. I've been in here all my life, and, and this is where, who I am. Um, I'm here for you, the residents of the City of Brockton. You're the one that's going to vote for me. You're, you hired me, basically. When I get there as mayor, I'm going to respect that. A lot of mayors don't respect that. Once they, get, once they get elected, they forget that the residents are the boss. And when I'm elected, I will never forget that. You never forget where you come from. You know, I grew up down in, in Glenwood Street near where Vincentius is, and it was a tough neighborhood. You don't forget the, the, the you know, the people you've met in over the years and, 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 and so on. So I'm just basically um, the passionate mayor, can, mayoral candidate with the experience, and that's the key factor right now, ladies and gentlemen. We have a, candidate, a couple of candidates with no experience in working in the city government. They're going to have to have a huge learning curve and you have a mayor who is, is spending, you know, excessively and being irresponsible with everyone's taxpayers' money and putting up a smokescreen telling you everything's great and please, this time around, you gave them a chance. Don't do it again. Don't, because we're going to be in receivership soon. If we don't, if you, the stand, uh, standard of poor's bond rating. They're, qu they're questioning our bond rating right now because there's no plan, no future plan for where, how we're going to raise the money. So please, as if you uh, want, on September 22nd, I would love to have your vote. I wish you would vote for me, Chris McMillan. And November 3rd, hopefully I get to that. Again, I ask you for your vote. Thanks, Chris. Um, okay. We're going to be examining all the issues. This is democratically speaking. Yep. It's the official show of the Democratic Party right. in Brockton. It is a nonpartisan election. Yep. Uh, Mayor Carpenter will probably be appearing on the other show. There's a sure. show that the Republicans host, and he'll be on TV. Like I said, we'll have debates. We'll offer you time for a candidate statement right. as well. And we just hope to see everybody well, on the campaign trail. That's what it's all about, debating. Mm -hmm. um, I have the experience. We, we can go ahead. And facts don't lie. So two years ago, the mayor had no, back, you know, no uh, background at all. And it, so now he has a record to go in and look at. And I'm not going to uh, go negative. I'm just going to go factual. And facts don't lie. And that's what I'm going to do. And I, and I hope that we get the debates out there so the, regu so the rev residents can see that everything just about that was promised never came to fruition. And this is why we need... I desperately need a change, and with the change with experience, and that's myself. Well, I'm certainly glad I'm sitting on this, <laughs> this side of the table this election uh, during the campaign. Uh, um, you know, I went in to check on the candidates. It's very tempting to pick up papers and do something yourself, but yeah. I, uh, it's all about timing. It's all about family. I have a mom and dad yep. that I need to help out. Yep. So, Chris, I wish you oh, luck. Thanks, we'll be talking some Thank more. Thank you very much for having and, me. And uh, you're welcome. And uh, you are watching Democratically Speaking. Stay tuned, and we will have more candidates for a city office, for mayor, for council at large, for school committee. But remember, most most of all, get out on September 22nd and do your duty as a citizen. Don't just sit back and complain about it. Vote. Thank you.